Hello everyone, my name is Gaurav and today I will be explaining Z-Transform and its various properties. So let's start. In the study of discrete time signals and systems, we have thus far considered the time domain and frequency domain. The Z domain gives us the third representation. All three domains are related to each other. A special feature of the Z-Transform is that for signals and systems of interest to us, all of the analysis will be in terms of ratio of polynomials. Working with these polynomials is relatively straightforward. Coming to Z-Transform, the Z-Transform is the most general concept for the transformation of discrete time series. The Laplace Transform is the most general concept for the transformation of continuous time processes. For example, the Laplace transforms allows you to transform a differential equation and its corresponding initial and boundary value problems into a space in which the equation can be solved by ordinary algebra. The switching of spaces to transform calculus problems into algebraic operations on transforms is called operation calculus. The Laplace and Z transforms are the most important methods for this purpose. Now we'll look at the definition of the Z-transform. Given a finite length signal xn, the Z-transform is defined as x of z equals to summation over n x of k uh, into z k power minus k that is also equal to summation over n x of k into z inverse raised to the power minus k where the sequence, uh, where the sequence support interval is 0 to n and z is any complex number. This transformation produces a new representation of xn denoted by xz. Returning to the original sequence, the inverse z transform xn, xn requires finding the coefficient associated with the nth pow power of z raised to the power minus n. So now here we see the various uh, definitions of the transforms. The Laplace transform is used to handle piecewise or continuous or impulsive force. And then we have one sided or unilateral Z transform and dead two sided or bilateral Z transform. The only difference between the two types of Z transforms is in the limits as we can see. The unilateral Z transform has a limit of n going from 0 to infinity whereas the bilateral Z transform has a limit of n from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now we derive the relation between the Z and the Fourier transform by expressing the complex variable Z in polar coordinates. Uh, it reveals the relationship between the Fourier transform and the Z transform. So in, in, in place of Z, as we know, Z is a complex number, so it can be replaced in its polar form. So we replace as a Z equals to R e to the power minus, sorry, e to the power i omega and to the uh, Z transform definition. Um, following which we get the relationship between the Fourier transform and the Z-transform. Uh, now we define what is region of convergence. The region of convergence uh, known as ROC is um, important to understand because it defines the region where the Z-transform exists. The Z-transform of Xn can be viewed as the Fourier transform of Xn multiplied by an exponential sequence Rn and the Z-transform may converge even when the Fourier transform does not. For the Fourier transform to converge, the following equations must be satisfied that is summation over uh, minus infinity to, to the plus infinity into mod of xn into uh, r k power minus n should be less than infinity for the region of conversion to exist. The ROC of a given Xn is defined as the range of a Z for which the Z transform converges. Since the Z transform is a power series, it converges when Xn, Z, uh, Xn into Z minus N is absolutely summable, stated differenti uh, differently. Some of the properties of the region of convergence are the ROC cannot contain any poles. If Xn is finite duration sequence, then ROC is the entire Z plane except possibly Z equals to 0 or mod of Z equals to infinity. So as we can see, 
the for ROC to be present, the xn into z minus n is absolutely some way. Now we take a look at some special functions. First we introduced the Dirac delta function uh, denoted by del of n which is 0 if n is not equals to 0 and 1 if n equals to 1 or in terms of time del of t is 0 when time is not equals to 0 and 1 if time equals to 0. This allows an arbitrary sequence xn or continuous times function ft to be expressed uh, uh, in terms of uh, its uh, discrete counterpart. Uh, so any uh, uh, continuous sequence support, uh, for example xn can be represented uh, in a in, in its discrete form using the Dirac delta function. So xn equals to uh, summation over minus infinity plus infinity x of k into del of n minus k. Similarly in integration form we have f of t equals to integral over minus infinity to plus infinity f of x del of x minus t into del dt. So uh, now we define what are poles and zeros. So when x z is a rational function that is a ratio of polynomials in z then the roots of the numer uh, numerator polynomial are referred to as the zeros of the x z and the root of denominator polynomial are referred to as the poles of x z. Uh, one thing to note is that the no poles of xz can occur within the region of convergence since the z transform does not converge at a pole. Furthermore, the region of convergence is bounded by the poles. So now we take a look uh, at an example in order to understand zeros and poles. So if, if xn is a function that is described as a, uh, a k power n into un, that is un is the unit set function. The z transform of the above, fun above function is given by xz equals to summation over minus infinity to plus infinity a k power n into un into z k power minus n which converges to xz equals to 1 upon 1 minus a raised to power a into z raised to power minus 1 that is equal to z upon z minus a. So uh, clearly we can see here that uh, z equals to 0 is the 0 of the of the above uh, function and we have a pole at z equals to a. Uh, from the diagram we can see that we have a pole at z equals to 0 and z equals to a and the region of convergence is uh, for uh, a circle for outside the circle uh, that is denoted by z uh, minus a equals to 0. Sorry z minus Z for mod of z equals to greater than a. So now we uh, here take a look at z transform of some common sequences. Uh, so um, now we we'll take a look at some properties of the z transform. The z transform are linear. Uh, so if we take a z transform of any function such as a x n plus b y n so the z transform of the given function can be written as a into z transform of uh, x n that is given by x z plus b into z transform of uh, y n that is given by y z. Uh, the transformation of a shifted sequence z of x n plus n naught can be given by uh, z it is to the power and not x of z. Uh, the multiplication property of uh, the transform is z. If we take a z, z transform of uh, any function which has a co um, uh, coefficient of a uh, something like a is to the power n, then its z transform will be z into a inverse of z and z. But multiplication will affect the region of convergence and all the uh, pole zero location will be scaled by a factor of a. So some we have some more definitions over here. Uh, the, the definition of a periodic signal is a sequence xn is periodic with period, a period lambda 
if and only if x of n of uh, that function is equals to x of n plus lambda that means this uh, signal has a wavelength of uh, lambda and it uh, repeats itself after a period of lambda uh, shift invariant or time invariant of um, functions are uh, if we consider a sequence y n as a result of transformation of uh, t of xn another interpret interpretation is that t is a system that responds to an input or stimulus xn then y n equals to t into x of n the transformation t is said to be shift invariant or time invariant if and only if y n equals to t into x n implies that y of n minus k equals to t into x of n minus k for all k shift invariant is same thing as the time invariant when n is time so now if we consider h k to be the response of the system uh, to del of n minus k occurring at uh, n equals k then y n uh, equals to t into summation of minus summation from minus infinity to plus infinity x of k del of n minus k uh, then we have uh, y n equals summation of uh, from minus infinity to plus infinity x of k h k into n if we have time invariance of the transform t then y n equals summation over minus infinity to plus infinity x of k h of n minus k that is equals to x of n into h of n this implies that the system can be completely characterized by its simple response hn hence this obviously hinges on the stationary uh, stationarity of the series so now we define what is a stable system a, st a system is said to be stable if uh, summation of minus infinity to plus infinity into hk of the system is less than infinity which means that a bounded input will not yield an unbounded output uh, and the definition of a causal system is a causal system is one in which changes in output do not precede changes in input in other words if x1 n equals to x2 n for n is less than n naught then t of x1 n equals to t of x2 n for n is less than x naught uh, and not and finally if linear and shift invariant system are causal if h of n is equals to 0 for n is less than 0 so if we have uh, y of n equals to summation of minus infinity to plus infinity x of k into h of h subscript k and of n and uh, let xn be a sinusoidal wave that is xn equals to e raised to power i omega n for my uh, n is uh, greater than minus infinity and less than infinity then y of n equals to e raised to power i omega n summation for minus infinity to plus infinity h of k e raised to power i omega k so that y of n equals to h into e raised to power i omega e raised to power i omega n here h e raised to power i omega n is called the frequency response of the system where, uh, whose impulse response is h of n and uh, h of e raised to power i omega n is a Fourier transform of h n so finally we will take a look at uh, some of the applications of the z transform a closed loop or feedback control system is shown in the figure if we can descri describe your plant and your controller using linear difference equations and if the coefficient of the equation don't change from ample, uh, from sample to sample then your controller and plant are linear and shift invariant and you can use z transform so suppose we have xn equals to output of the plant at sample time n and un equals to command to the dac at sample time n and a and b equals constant set by design of the plant we can solve the behavior equation of the plant over time that is given by xn equals to a1 xn minus 1 plus a2 xn minus 2 uh, up to n plus b1 u n minus 1 plus b2 u n minus 2 up to u of 1 furthermore we can also investigate what happens when you add feedback to the system 
the seed transform allows you to uh, do both of these above things it also deals with many common feedback control problems using continuous time control it is also used in sample time control situations to deal with linear shift invariant difference equations so that's all for z transform thank you